So in my last video, I was like, oh, I'm gonna do a makeup favorite at the end of the year, like I always do. It's my 14th year of doing a makeup favorites. And the top comment was like, do a style favorites too. So that is what this video is gonna be, a 2023 style favorites. I picked out some of my favorite pieces and put them on around. We've got shoes, we've got bags as well. And I was like, oh, I'll pick 10 pieces. I'll do 10 pieces. <laughs> I, how, um, <laughs> there's a few more here than that. 24, uh, that's possibly about one sixth of my wardrobe. <laughs> These are my favorites. Uh, but I thought it'd be fun just to do a little like patchwork mishmash of some of my favorite style pieces of the year. I thought there was two ways of doing this. I was like, I could do like my favorite t-shirt, my favorite cardigan, my favorite trousers. But maybe in some categories, I don't necessarily have a favorite and then I'd be sharing with you things that I didn't feel that strongly about. These are all things I feel very strongly about. And if you've watched my videos, watched my Instagram, or like been on my TikTok, these will come as no surprise. You'll be like, yeah, of course. Yeah, knew that was gonna be there. Um, but maybe this is a fun thing that I can do each year and like check back in on and see if some things change, if some things stay the same. Um, I thought it'd be like a fun thing to do. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna try and find photos of me wearing things to like put up on the screen as we go, because there's probably a few too many things to try on. I'll be in and out of things all day. Were there any other disclaimers I was gonna add? I think that was it. Makeup favorites coming next week. But style favorites, I, I could do that. I could do that when I saw a comment. I was like, that actually sounds like a very good idea. Right, maybe we'll start off with accessories. Oh, that was, that was the other disclaimer I wanted to say. I've kept this to just clothing, bags, and shoes, um, oh, and a belt as well. I haven't done, like, I mean, there's things I wear every day, like my pajamas, my Lulu and leggings, like all things like that. I was like, you know what? There's too many categories, like my necklace that I wear all the time, my earrings I wear all the time. Too, too many categories, too many things. We saved it just for clothing, one belt. <laughs> I'm sure you can guess which one. Shoes and bags. Right, I'm gonna get started with bags, actually. I've got three bags to share with you here. You know what, let's get the most um, obvious one out the way, my Loewe puzzle bag. Like, it's kind of crazy to me that I purchased this, I think, seven years ago now, and it is still the bag that I reach for every single day. My cost per wear of this bag is low. It is low. I mean, I obviously got it before the many, many price increases that have happened, like since 2016, I think I got it. But I love that it is so classic. It is so a bit of me that all these years later, and this is still, this is like what my daily, kind of bag stash lives in and then I take it from here and put it in another bag if I want another bag. But most of the time I'm wearing this bag. It's crossbody, I can hold it. It's just, it is perfect. It genuinely is perfect to me. So of course this was gonna be a favorite. However, the Cezanne Milo bag has become a favorite this year. I mean, even with this outfit, cute. I love that it is a lot more structured than my lower bay. So it kind of adds a little bit more, not a, for, not a formal, but it adds a bit of structure to my looks that can sometimes be quite relaxed, quite oversized, quite baggy. This adds that little touch of like tailoring, polish, and because it is so structured, it forces me to be quite um, edited with what I'm carrying around, which isn't necessarily always a bad thing. Bad, bad thing? <laughs> isn't necessarily always a bad thing. Um, I've also found just with like my social things that I go to this year, like if I'm going out for dinner with girlfriends, I might not necessarily want to take my Chanel wallet on the chain necessarily, but I might want to take a bag with me that just feels a little bit more put together. So I wear this. Um, I've worn it a lot, I've reached for it a lot. And I think it is a great, it's not an affordable bag necessarily. It's not under a hundred pound or anything like that, but it's real leather and kind of sits in that like mid bag price category. And I really, really love it. And then the third and final bag is a bag that you would have seen so much over the summer for the St. Agni leather woven tote. Ard and denard about this bag for maybe like three summers and this was the summer that I finally made the purchase. I've seen Lizzie wear it for years. I got it, I got it and I absolutely love it, loved it. I wore it so much over the summer but I mean even now I felt like oh I'm making a summer bag purchase but I think it's more than that. Like even now I could easily, I mean it looks great with the outfit that I'm wearing now if I was just wearing like, I don't know, this jacket one of the coats or jackets I'm going to share with you later on, like it works with those, like it fits a lot in. 
Um, it just goes with absolutely everything and the more that I wear it, the more it gets that kind of relaxed, lived in look, which I really love. So this was definitely a good purchase for me. Let's do shoes whilst we're at it as well. I really tried to cut it down. And also it's really hard when you're in like the winter mentality to think back to what you were wearing in the summer. Although, oh guys, I have a revelation to make. <gasps> I haven't used wearing for like a good two and a half months and I feel really gutted about it. I'm thinking it's something I might start up in the new year because I would love to get a year under my belt. I'd love to get a January to December under my belt like that. Maybe it could be one of my new year's resolutions. But I just found that when I started doing the wardrobe diary substack to be documenting what I was wearing every day on there and then also remembering to put it into my wearing app as well. It was like one step too far. Um, but I would, I would like to really restart it because I love the data, I love the stats. Oh, and I, how great would it be to be like, these are my top 20 most worn things this year. So maybe we'll restart that. Maybe we will restart that. I'd really like to do that. Um, but I was casting my mind back to the summer. And I mean, if you watched any of my like 30 days of summer Instagram reels or anything, you'd be like, yeah, it was, it was either these or it was these. I wore my flip-flops a lot this summer and the flip-flops became my mango, like Chanel dad dupe slides from the year before that people were like, Anna, <laughs> these are disgusting, stop wearing them, please. I actually did stop wearing those this summer, so you'll be pleased, you'll be pleased to know that. But then I just replaced them for an equally disliked <laughs> sandal. Whenever I put on the Aviadas, people were like, love the outfit, I hate the flip-flops. People were just not into them, but for my lifestyle right now, they just work really well and I love that you can wear quite like a tailored polished outfit and then put these on and it just makes the whole thing look really relaxed and they just really, I like the thin straps. I've got a lot of good things to say about them even though I know they're not a fan favourite but I really love those. If I wasn't wearing those, I was wearing the M Parsons, I mean do not look at the insides of these, the M Parsons Barry sandals. Oh my gosh these sandals were so good. I took them to the cobbler, I got like a um, proper sole put on them because I was slipping and sliding everywhere incredible like incredible just so beautifully made really like simple and delicate on the foot really comfortable i will be buying these in the black next summer like for sure if i could ever find these in the sale in the black i'm interested <laughs> sign me up um i wear them in a i don't actually know the cobbler's um sole has gone over it i'll have to like check online before i buy them again and um, but yeah the black ones of these are definitely on my shopping list because i did wear them so much but yeah big big fan and then these two um i know that these were on my wearing list when i was keeping up with it my converse i had a huge realization about trainers this summer i spoke about it in my last video i don't need chunky i don't really like trendy i just need classic these are classics again very comfortable because they're like the 70s comfort style so really cushioned on the bottom know that i can wear these and like they're not going to give me blisters i can wear them all day it's cool super super into the converse and then these i was going to put my toe 10 mid heel like city boots in but they're like a semi recent buy i've only had them for the last kind of two months or so i love them <laughs> they're like such a good boot i am so obsessed with them but the gani cali sandal sandals <laughs> the gani cali um heeled boots i've had these for years i repurchased them in a bigger size once i'd had ralph um but like the, these have just been a real staple in my wardrobe and especially if i'm going out and I'm like right I want to wear a heel these are the heels that I'm wearing plus I know they're not too high I can always wear them to London for the day if I need to so big fan of like a western style boot although I'm sure next year it'll be the toe turn boots because big fan okay on to clothing um oh okay our final final accessory the Anderson's black belt I mean this is going to be here I would say I probably wore this belt with about 70 percent of my outfits this year if there was a belt loop I was wearing this belt. Um, I wear it in an 85. The 80 does fit. I've actually got the zebra print in an 80 because that's all they had left. But I don't have a huge amount of belt left over. Whereas with this, I mean, you can see it's just like longer. I have more belt left over. So it just depends what kind of look you want. The 80, if you're like a UK kind of size 12, the 80 fits with a little bit to tuck in. The 85 fits with like a lot to tuck in. Um, but yeah, I. I've just worn it so much and I absolutely love it and it's a real outfit finisher for me like I feel like when I put it on I'm like yeah okay this this outfit is complete <laughs> I'm gonna start with coats and jackets and actually a lot of the coats that I've got at the moment um like my black toe 10 coat 
my black Arquette kind of quilted coat. Those were both things that I repurchased earlier in the year because I had the green versions of them and I just wasn't feeling the green anymore. So I sold the green, I rebought them in the black. So although like that style of coat is a favorite, it doesn't feel right to necessarily include it in this lineup because they're still relatively new to me in the black. Although I love the style. I would say my most worn coat and also just like my favorite coat. I don't know when I wear this, it just makes me feel amazing. I mean, thank God, because it was so <laughs> expensive. But the, I mean, now I'm just putting it on, now I'm just trying it on. The mango, the oversized navy coat, the raglan sleeve coat. I wore this to London yesterday, just wore like a very basic outfit underneath and then this on top and was just like, oh my gosh, it is so good. It is such a like part of the outfit. It like is the outfit, if that makes sense. A very expensive purchase for me. I think this is my third winter wearing it and I still absolutely love it. Let's try this on as well. The, um, the Whistles clean leather bonded jacket. I think I picked this up last winter. Um, I wear it in small, by the way, I'd say it's really quite oversized. I'm generally more of a medium in things. Um, but yeah, this is great. So good for like spring, autumn. Found myself wearing it a lot like October, November time, just for those sort of in between, in between months, um, but can obviously be like layered up as well. Like it's not, it's not thick. <laughs> it's a leather jacket, but you could really wear like chunky knits underneath it if you needed to. Um, but yeah, just something about the cut, the design, it's like a little bit different, but it still feels kind of classic. I really dig this. I'm really, really happy that I kept this. Jumper wise, I've got four, um, but I've worn them all a ton. Um, this one, you might be like, Anna, you're wearing exactly the same thing right now. Kind of, yes, I am. This one is from Arquette and this is from the men's section. It's their merino wool jumper. I wear it in a small. Um, I needed a jumper that was really, really thin that I could just throw over my shoulders because all of my jumpers were quite thick, especially like chunky. I feel like last year or like last winter was almost like the winter of the chunky knit, like everything that I wore was quite chunky. Whereas I definitely feel like I'm going more to like a thinner, a, knit, a thinner knit, like a crew neck kind of cashmere knit seems to be my go-to this year. Um, but I needed something that I could layer with and just like throw over the top of my shoulders. And this has been great. I ended up wearing this a lot in the summer, like obviously sometimes here in the evenings or just like on cooler summer days, I could just wear this with like shorts or something. It's really thin, really breathable. Um, I just found myself reaching for it a lot. This one that I'm wearing today is from Equipment. Probably one of the longest standing things in my wardrobe. I've had this for like, probably like eight years now. And this is quite a tight, um, obviously like a lot tighter fitting than that one, um, but like a tight kind of cashmere jumper. Whereas this one is a bit more loose and relaxed. And um, speaking of loose and relaxed, I really like this one. This is from, I think the Arquette men's section again. Um, this year I had it uh, repaired and I genuinely, I know it was like on one of the elbows, genuinely can't see where it's been repaired, but I loved it that much. I took it to a seamstress and she just like sewed up the hole, which was great. And I'm looking at it and I think it's got Ralph's yogurt on. Yeah. Needs to go in the wash. Lovely. There's something about the tone of this gray. It's really kind of, I always try and find dupes online and it's like, no, it's not mal and it's not pale. It's just like the perfect, <laughs> the perfect gray. Like that is, that's, that's where we're at on my channel now. I'm talking about the perfect gray, but this to me is the perfect gray jumper. I love wearing this. I love wearing this so much. And I'll say if ever I'm like standing and I'm like, oh, I don't know what to wear, I will pick this up and build an outfit around that. Um, this is also grey, but paler grey, see what I'm saying? Not not necessarily not the perfect grey, I actually prefer this because it's a cardigan in this tone. Um, this is a newer purchase, I probably picked this up like end of August, September time. I made, I made a little reformation haul and this was part of that. Um, but I'm loving this almost like 90s, it feels a bit like 90s, right? Like 90s in a film, rom-com <laughs> style of the cashmere crew but the cardigan the cardigan really love wearing this like with a couple of the buttons undone at the top or the bottom um, and a really nice layering piece as well i just realized through my talks with allison that a lot of what i own actually isn't great for layering necessarily like i needed a few things that i could like open <laughs> i needed a few like layering shirts um, and that's a really like nice layering cardigan i'm just going to include this because i think it might be my favorite jumper of all time it's from totem i picked it up from vestier collective i think about four years ago now i've had it for an age but it's the perfect kind of slightly oversized beigey jumper just really 
just simple, just very, very simple. But again, like the Arquette Grey Jumper, whenever I'm a bit like, oh, I don't know what to wear, I'll just wear this. Like even with today's outfit, yeah, could have just thrown this on. Goes with everything. Arquette do a really good dupe, like the Arquette alpaca and a jumper you see everywhere. It's very similar because it's got the very kind of wide sleeve, which is what I really love about this. But it's just one of those ones that I'm like, I don't think I could ever be without this. Just feels like a classic. Okay, this summer I tried to like cast my mind back and I was like, I think I wore these a load. And they're from Arquette and they're their linen, um, are they called like, maybe they're not called the oversized linen shirt actually. When I was pregnant, the oversized linen shirts from Arquette lived in. I was very heavily pregnant over the summer. Arguably possibly the worst time to be heavily pregnant in like really, really hot weather. So I wore them loads and they were the oversized ones that were really, really long. So I could literally just wear like those with leggings. And I was like, cool, okay, this is my like outfit for the day. But I realized post-pregnancy that actually like the super oversized ones just didn't really work if I wanted in my wardrobe anymore. There was too much. I wanted to really like tuck them in and there was too much fabric to tuck in. So I sold those on Vinted and then got these ones. And I just really love this shape of shirt <laughs> from Marquette, that's really hard to say. It's a very square, it's like a square kind of cut, very boxy, and then the sleeves, just the right length, they're quite baggy, it's like a little bit of a drop sleeve. Um, it's just exactly what I want in a shirt. I was really happy when later on in the year they bought out like a normal kind of white cotton shirt in that style, and I've got that in my wardrobe as well. But for the summer, the beige and the black, linen and um, shirts what i wore all the time this summer was also the summer of a vest for me like a knitted vest a category in my wardrobe which i previously didn't own had never owned um and i first picked up i think i picked up like a secondhand jaeger one that was that was the entry point for me and from there i got this i never know how to say this brand sir so sir s-o-e-u-r <laughs> Um, a really gorgeous brand, I picked this up from uh, Selfridges and uh, I mean, you know, you know, I wore this a lot, I wore this a lot in the summer, even though it is wool and technically quite thick, it was actually quite nice for those like that in between point where you could like wear this with some jeans and like a light jacket over the top it was kind of perfect for those sorts of days, um, but just really love it, just like a white knitted vest i never knew that i really would get that much wear out of one but i really did i've also picked one up since from arquette in the black but i definitely wore the cream the most and then honorable mention to these two of course um if you yeah you you've seen these right <laughs> i was gonna say you probably you might even own them i feel like this in particular was one of the most purchased things on like my affiliate platform. Like, I think this is my most purchased thing of the year actually. It's from Mango and it's just a knitted waistcoat. And I just wore, I wore like this with some denim shorts or just like jeans like this, pair of flip flops, done. Bob's your uncle. Already I, I can't wait to wear this again. It's such a simple, like on the hanger you're just like, yeah, sure, that's fine. But actually, in terms of styling opportunities, I don't know, I really, really enjoyed wearing this one. I feel like you guys did too. Did you pick this up? Are you looking forward to wearing it next year? Because I, I definitely am. Um, but also, really loved this one. This one I actually picked up before, it just like got sold out and then never really came back. Um, really enjoyed, this one was like longer line. Um, so I didn't tend to tuck this one in as much. And it also came with matching uh, knitted trousers and I bought those and I've, I've, I was literally wearing them this morning they're kind of a good working from home trouser for me um, but I really like the tone of this one haven't really owned this kind of caramelly colour before um, I mean look at me being like look at me adding colour <laughs> into my wardrobe like, Anna it's brown it's brown um, but yeah really this this and like the wavy hair and the Life Studios necklace just really felt like my summer vibe and I just felt I felt that this summer was the first time I really enjoyed like dressing for summer because I found summer pieces that felt like me I wasn't wearing florals or flouncy or like roughly I was still wearing pieces that felt like classic and felt like me but were appropriate for the summer and I wasn't sweating my balls off <laughs> in the corner like I normally do in a pair of trousers um speaking of which this dress, um, this is from Reformation, I think it's called their Aubrey dress. Just a kind of very straight cut linen dress with this spaghetti strap. It has kind of a reinforced, not reinforced, more like a double lined area in the chest so I felt comfortable like not needing to put on nipple covers or anything like that. And it just had 
a little tie at the back. Re just, just lovely. Like one of those dresses that I put on and was just like, I feel great in this. I feel great in this. Again, very easy to style. Wore it a lot with just like my flip flops. Oh, the flattered slip ons. Oh, I feel like I should have included those. I really, really loved wearing those this year. Well, we're Adam in next year. We're Adam in next year. But yeah, I felt like I finally found my version of summer style and that was really exciting. Normally I'm like an autumn girl through and through, but I'm like summer. We did it, we did it finally. It wouldn't be a style favorites video of the year without mentioning the Goldie 90s Finch waist jeans. Oh my gosh, these jeans. These are like my, you know, the redone high rise stovepipe jeans. I love those. I still own a pair of those. They're definitely, on me anyway, more of like a seven eighths length almost. Like they're a little bit just above the ankle. These on me on a five foot seven frame are like perfect. Perfect length. Just right. Like just hit the top of your shoe. I would say to size down one size. They come up large. I say that every time. I'm probably more of like a true 29 waist, but I wear a 28 in these. Um, they're great. They're just absolutely great. I've got blue wash. I've got um, the black wash. I've got an indigo wash. I forgot. I'm wearing my indigo wash ones today. Um, yeah, I just really, really love them. If you're slightly taller, I would recommend the long style. They now stock those on Metaforte. Are these the long ones? Oh yeah, these are the long ones. The indigo ones that I've got. These ones are the long style, so it means that when I wear them out of the house, I like to wear them with a boot. But these ones are perfect with flats or boots. I just what more is there to say except these are my favourite denim of the year. Like these are my favourite jeans of the year. Best style I found. I've literally like replaced all of my jeans like with this style. I've now got like a wardrobe <laughs> of a Goldie Knight pinch waist jeans and for good reason they're found. Casting my mind back to summer again. Um, these are also a Goldie but I found the perfect denim shorts. Oh I just I love it. I love it when you find something you're like yep yeah, cool yep yeah, these these are a bit of me. Um, I think they're called the Parker Long Shorts. I have them in this wash. Um, these don't have the distressed hem. I also have them in a paler wash with the distressed hem. Um, and again, like when you just find your denim shorts, you're like, yep, yeah, cool. These are my denim shorts <laughs> of the year. I love like wearing these with like the linen shirt. I do the flip flops with them. I do my Life Studios necklace. Done, sorted, good to go. Um, I really like the pale wash, but I think I prefer this deep wash just a little bit more. We are almost there. We're almost there. Two more pairs of trousers to talk about. Um, these are the piece of part cords that, again, I probably picked these up at a similar time I picked up the Reformation and jumper. So this is definitely a newer entry. But cords, guys, who knew? I've got so much wear out of these. Also, they're so comfortable. If you're watching this channel, I feel like maybe you are a bit of a denim lover as well. But if you find denim just super uncomfortable and you're like, I can't, do it on a daily basis like especially not working from home why would you wear jeans at home like if that's your vibe get a pair of cords i've been so surprised by how comfortable stretchy literally like wearing pajamas they are but they add texture and for me they add color um i'm just so into them i'm so into them and so into the styling of them also the shape of these they're a really nice they're almost like a barrel leg which or like they're not horseshoe necessarily but they're a bit barrel leg which when i normally see on other people i'm like looks great on you i just don't think that's going to work on me um but i'd say yeah just the shape of these i know they've been like out of stock for the longest time but if you can find this style i really feel quite passionately about this style i'll link a post there down below that has like a load of dupes in it because when I first bought these and I looked for a dupe, I, I, I couldn't find them, there was like one or two pairs. Now there are a ton, there's absolutely loads. And so I will link that post down below for you. But yeah, it's just been a nice way to add a bit of color and a bit of texture into an otherwise quite plain <laughs> wardrobe. Then finally, my silk trousers. Um, these from Arquette, I think I've had them for three years now maybe. I got these originally because they're basically a dupe of the row silk trousers, which are like £2,000 or something insane. And I like them so much that I spent good money to get them uh, tailored because the um, they, were, they were like a little bit, it was one of those things, they were a little bit too big on the waist so then they sat lower on the waist but then that meant that the crotch was slightly lower and also they needed to be taken up. So I took them to a tailor and they were just like, yeah, no, I reckon we should um, take them in around the waist and then they'll fit you everywhere else properly. So they did, so they just like, took 
in the waist and the fabric is still there if ever I needed to get them taken back out again. Um, and yeah, they tailored them like down the back. So now they sit perfectly on the waist. They sit, the crotch sits in the right area. The length is just right. Oh, the, these are like my summer trouser. It's really nice as someone who has psoriasis on their legs that, oh my gosh, my psoriasis this year has been like the worst it has ever been in my entire life. Um, I just didn't feel like necessarily having my legs out all the time. So this is really nice for like a summer trouser option, but also really nice like transitionally as well, like really gorgeous in autumn with like a chunky knit over the top. Like there are just so many ways to wear these and I'm so happy to have them in my wardrobe and I'm so happy I didn't give up on them when they didn't fit me. There was always a way. So that concludes my 2023 style favorites i mean i've never done one of these before so i'm totally open to any feedback you've got like any way that i can improve this i mean this is you know, it's quite a long video <laughs> i mean i just love standing here and talking to you about neutral basic items in my wardrobe this is like my happy place but yeah if there's anything that could be improved for next year let me know let me know if you enjoyed this you said you wanted it you were like give me a style favorite so hopefully you've enjoyed this hopefully i've like i feel like i've forgotten things now i've just remembered about the flattered shoes if there's anything else that you think you're surprised that i haven't mentioned pop it down pop it down below pop it down below and i'll, I'll maybe there was, maybe there's a reason why it's not here but maybe i did just forget it um thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this video everything i've mentioned will be linked down below for you and I will be back next week with my 14th, <laughs> the 14th year of my yearly makeup favourites. So I will see you then. Bye.